Hey guys, I'm Ezra and in this Lord of the Rings Rise of War video I'm going to show you a guide about Thorin. So Thorin is a commander who is a hybrid, that means that he is capable of doing both things like boosting the troop damage of his army and also dealing damage by himself. But does it pay off? We will see in the report section later. But for the time being let's continue summarizing what Thorin is all about. Looking at this typing he is considered a leader which is okay, but after having had a look at his skill set, I do believe that the leader typing would have been better for him since he has a lot of active skills that can deal lots of damage and the warrior typing would have boosted that damage even further. But leader is the second type which he can make use of, so we gotta make do with what we have so far, but in an ideal scenario I wish they had given him the warrior typing. But maybe I'm wrong, but right now having a look at the skills, this is what I believe would work better for him. And then looking at the stats, we definitely want to have lots of might. This is what he specializes in. He is increasing his own damage, but also the damage of his army. And then as a secondary stat for his troop boosting build, he would like to have focus as well, because that will further increase his burst damage for his troops. But other than that, it is just there, like if you are playing him in his damage dealing skill set, he won't need the focus stat that much. The speed stat, well he just needs enough to outspeed any other DPSing commanders, so that is important for him. Or how about just giving him the fiddle of the eldest with blitz, then he doesn't really need to worry about a speed stat. Anyway. So let's get over to his gear, right now I have the battle axe with flay, then the hauberk with fire protection, casco submerged isle with determination and hiff lane with mant. Now let's jump over to his skills and let me show you his two builds. The first build I'm going to show to you is his damage dealing build that revolves around his respect 3 tree as well his top respect 0 tree. And this is how you would be scaling him. First you put two points into Oaken Shield and as you see it doesn't matter if you put more points into this to increase the damage mitigation of it. As soon as you put one point into it you already get this flat damage reduction of minus 5%. That is already worth putting one point into it. You put two points here and then we have access to his other skills. We want to put one point into Topple. This will deal a bit of physical damage but also stun and this is the main reason why we put one point into it. We want the CC mechanic going off every three rounds. So every three rounds you get a 50% chance of stunning the enemy unit. That is a great mechanic that is built into it and also you deal physical damage. So we take this just to have the reliable stun every three rounds. 50% is still reliable. And then we also put one point into Deliberate Strike. This is Thorin's strongest damage dealing ability he has. Like once we max it out, you will see that this will be around 300 to 700% physical damage dealt. And this is also why you should definitely focus on maxing this as one of your first abilities. Which is why at this point you need to rotate between Oaken Shield and Deliberate Strike. This is what we are going to do, go back and forth between these two skills, but I'm going to speed this up for this video's sake. Now we are ready to jump over to Spresspec 3 skill tree, King Under the Mountain, and now we can do this, like go two points into King Under the Mountain, one point into Dwarfen Grid, because Dwarfen Grid, like with Dine, is going to further increase the DPS of Thorin. Two points into King Under the Mountain and go back and forth between Dwarfen Grid and those two skills. Once both skills are maxed out, you are ready to jump over to Longbeard. You should definitely put any leftover points you have into this. Now, my Thorin is respect level 3, which is why I can't further commit into his skill tree. But if I had him at higher respect levels, I would definitely max out Longbeard. And from this point on, I wouldn't go back into Revivalist. I would go into Kings of Durin's Folk and max out these points over here. Or at least go back and forth between Kings of Durin's Folk and Parry just to have more survivability for my army. So the longer they stay alive, the more damage Thorin can put out. 
But there is also one point why I am against Revivalist in this build, which is because of Dwarven Grid. So Dwarven Grid will boost the damage of his first four damage sources. And you want those damage sources to be as high as possible. But Revivalist is screwing up the synergy of his damage dealing skills. Let me show you a little graphic that will further visualize what I'm meaning. So here we have a little visualization of his skills. And let me show you what I meant that Dwarfen Grit is being screwed up by putting one point into Revivalist. So you see to the top the physical damage these skills are dealing. Like Oaken Shield is dealing 390%, King Under Mountain 210, Deliberate Strike 300 to 700%, Topple 350%. Revivalist only 200%. But since Revivalist has a mechanic called Rush built into it, it will go in on round one. That means your very first stack of Dwarven Grit would be consumed by Revivalist. That would leave you three stacks of Dwarven Grit remaining and those could be going off with the remaining skills over here as you see. But why should we put one point into Revivalist if it is dealing the least amount of damage. I would rather have my other skills go in with max damage, like Oaken Shield should be boosted by Dwarven Grid, King Under the Mountain, Deliberate Strike and Topple. These skills would love to being boosted by that Dwarven Grid, which is why I will not put points into Revivalist. Now, if you have your Thorin at very high respect levels, like 25, maybe then it would be worth putting points onto Revivalist and see how it works out. But for the time being, this is what I have noticed. But I definitely think that at low respect levels, it is better to not touch Revivalist at all. You should better invest all of your leftover respect points into his respect 5-3. Let me also quickly show you the second build of Thorin, which is his troop boosting build. We first put a few points onto Revivalist. And then as you see, we have access to inspiration. This is burst damage for your troops. So you definitely want to focus on these skills. And uh, also don't forget to put points onto Frightened because this is a stun chance for the first four rounds. And then we can just rotate like two points into Revivalist, one point into Inspiration. But before I do that, like before I continue this route, as you see, we have unlocked Oaken Shield. Now we jump back to this tree, put one point into this, at least one point to get the damage mitigation of the skill. Well, while we are here, let's also put another point into it just to unlock his other strong CC mechanic being Topple. Every three rounds, a 50% chance to stun. And now we have all we need, like we have damage mitigation and also stun. Now we are ready to proceed leveling. Let's jump back to Revivalist, put two points into it and then one point into Inspiration and go back and forth between these two skills. Now let me speed this up. Once those two skills are maxed out, now we can follow up with Frightened being pushed to 7 because this is also a very reliable stun chance in the first four rounds. That is very strong. Now we are ready to jump back to our top respect 0-3. Now what I would do from here onwards is I would rotate between Oaken Shield and Deliberate Strike. Put one point here, two points into Oaken Shield and then again go back and forth between these two skills. And there you go. This is already good enough to fight with Thorin even on a competitive level. As you see you can make use out of Thorin already at respect level 3. He is a great commander to play with. But I must admit that his respect 3 build where he deals the damage by himself is superior to this build. Now it's time to summarize Thorin's strengths and weaknesses. And as you see Thorin has a lot of good damage dealing active skills like Deliberate Strike, Oaken Shield, Topple, King Under the Mountain and then he further boosts the damage of these skills with Dwarfen Grid and Longbeard. That is just insane. So high commander damage is his first strength. His second strength is Oaken Shield because this is bringing flat damage mitigation. It is mitigating physical damage as well as elemental damage. And whenever this kicks in, it is stacking up. So it's going to stack up five times in battle. That means 5%, 10, 15, 20, 25% damage mitigation. That is great. His stat strength is definitely CC. And in this case, it is going to be army stun. 
He has Frightened as Army Stun here to the bottom, and also here at the top he has Topple with another reliable 50% stun chance. So reliable stuns is also a strength of Thorin. His last strength would be low upkeep costs, but we will get to that in the troop composition part. Let's also summarize Thorin's weaknesses, the first one being, well as you see since he has lots of active skills that deal damage, you are weak against Commander Stun. Whenever Commander Stun kicks in, your damage dealing skills are getting delayed by that very one round you have been stunned. And then Commander Madness is also very important because look at this. You have so many damage dealing abilities and when they go off against you, that is kind of insane. His second CC weakness would be Silence. Similar to Commander Stun, like Silence is delaying your active skills by one round whenever that CC kicks in. So that is a pity for Thorin. He needs to kind of watch that. But Silence is a CC that I don't see a lot, so I guess you don't really have to worry about that. His last CC weakness would be if you are running him in a multiple army composition, well then it's kind of self-explanatory that Thorin is weak against army madness. Which means you have to decide, do you want to protect Thorin from his own army damage or do you want to protect Thorin from his own DPSing skills like Oakenshield and King Under the Mountain. Next weakness would be elemental damage. As you see, he doesn't have high alert or warrior of lonely mountain, so he is kind of open against elemental damage. Even though Oaken Shield is mitigating damage as well, it is kind of not enough because it needs to stack up. That is making him weak against elemental damage. Next weakness would be Evade. All of these beautiful skills and troop boosting abilities will do you no good as long as you can't connect your hits. Like he will struggle against a Gilgalad who has a strong evading mechanic for the first three rounds. He may also struggle against Grimar who has Prudence. Prudence is giving a strong evading mechanic for the first two rounds. And that is a big weakness for Thorin. The third weakness would be whenever another DPSing commander is outspeeding him. That is where he is going to be hurt a lot. He's definitely going to feel that lack of speed. His last weakness would be, but this only counts for his troop boosting build. Imagine if you are playing him in his troop boosting build. Well, like the skill inspiration, this is burst damage, but this can be mitigated by burst mitigating abilities such as Mifrandir, White Council, Great King, and so on. Like, take care of that. Now it's time to have a look at Thorin's items and see what makes sense. In regards to his purple gear, as you see, I have listed these items over here. I consider them best in slot. Let's quickly go over them. So Battle Axe with Flay, like definitely best in slot. There isn't anything that is superior to this. In his damage dealing build, this will do the job just fine. And then in regards to his armor, superior Horbrick whenever you are fighting evil side, this is mandatory. Fire protection is just needed. You are covering one of his biggest weaknesses being fire damage. And then if you are fighting good side, Quilted Armor with focus protection would do the job. If you don't have to worry about elemental damage, go with scale mail and melee vigor. As his helmet choices, you can go with full helm and melee vigor, like best in slot because you will provide enough damage mitigation for your troops to survive so Thorin himself can deal the damage and also tons of might. That is great. If you are playing Thorin in his troop boosting build, you may want to equip the horseman's helm just to be safe against army madness because this has resolved. You don't want to burst damage against your own troops. And then as his accessories, we have Hif Lane. Like there isn't anything else that is better than this. You want to go with this. This works just perfectly fine when you have just one stack of a tanky unit. Like that is the best case scenario for Thorin. A second option you can also go with the Wizard's Fireworks because this is going to counter evading mechanics like Gilgalad's or that of Grimar because this has Hunter's Mark. And this accessory also works well with his troop boosting build because it's going to boost the burst damage of inspiration. Having a look at his golden weapons, I think the Hammer of Moria with lethal weapon or Axe of Khazad Doom with Cleave is his best choice. I do believe that Axe of Khazad Doom with Cleave is even better because after having done the math, Cleave is going to deal at least double the amount of physical damage in comparison to lethal weapon. But if you want to have overall great stats, like also 
physical damage mitigation, go with Hammer of Moria. Defense is going to boost your physical damage mitigation. But I do believe Axe of Khazad Doom is going to outperform Hammer of Moria. Looking at his chess pieces, we have a few options like Durin's Plate with Tactical Maneuvers. I do think that this is his number one choice. Tactical Maneuvers is damage mitigation for all kinds of damage sources, be it elemental or physical. And that's what he needs. As a second special effect option, you can make do with Dominance if you don't have Tactical Maneuvers. If you don't have Durin's Plate at all, you can also make do with Warbone Battle Plate. All the stats he needs, this is great. He has fortitude of soldiers this may not be burst damage mitigation but it is damage mitigation against all kinds of damage sources and it lasts for the 10 rounds as his helmet options i do believe that the iron bassinet is his strongest helmet be it fortitude of dwarves which behaves similar to like fortitude of soldiers but only with dwarven units this is going to be flat damage mitigation for elemental and physical damage, but only for your dwarven units. But you can also make do with arrow suppression, because for the first three rounds you will mitigate incoming ranged damage. Now Evil Side has figured out how to play Morgul Arbalest in the later seasons, like the Shadow is making good use of Morgul Arbalest, or Sunind, a commander who is very good in boosting the burst damage of a Morgul Arbalest. And in that case, you may want to equip Arrow Suppression. And as a second helmet choice, you can go with the Cask of Submerged Isle, because this too is covering two of Thorin's biggest weaknesses, being Army Madness if you are playing him in his troop boosting build, or if you are playing him in his damage dealing build, you want to have determination to cover Commander Madness. In regards to Thorin's accessories, I do believe that the Erebos Pride with Eradun Formation is his number one choice. Like there isn't any other accessory that is as good as this. Now there is the box of knowledge that is trying to be as close as it gets to it, but this needs lots of refinement to work because you want to push the proc chance of this to at least 50% to feel the benefit of this box. Keep in mind that you need the leader type of this special effect or else it's not going to work. Now does it make sense to invest into Thorin's Respect 10 item? This item in itself, whenever you boost it, like you 5 time refine it, is going to be amazing, like crazily amazing against Orcs and Urukais. And whenever that is the case, you are going to totally rock the world of your enemy. And also you get a bit of damage mitigation whenever the enemy army includes Orcs. But what do you do when you're fighting against evil men? All of a sudden, this weapon special effect is like zero. It's, it's like giving you no benefit. So this means that Thorin's Respect 10 item is outstandingly good against commanders that have Orcs and Urukais in their army, and then it is totally worth to invest into Orcrist, like commanders such as Gorbak or Gothmog, who are very strong with Orc units, and they kind of beat him when he doesn't equip Orcrist. So in that case, it would make sense to have Orcrist. But if you don't want to run Thorin situational, then you would be better by running the Axe of Khazad Doom or the Hammer of Moria to be safe against evil man units. I say the Orc Crest is situational. It shines very hardcore whenever you are fighting Orcs and Urukais, but whenever you fight Evil Man, it's not good enough. So it is up to you. Do you want to invest into a weapon that is situational? Alright, it's time to jump over to the troop composition and see what makes sense for Thorin. Right now, I am playing Thorin in his damage dealing build, like in his Respect 3 build. And for that purpose, I want to have tanky units in my army, so Thorin has enough time to do the damage. In this case, like you can do something like this, you know, you can have guardians or ram riders and also some iron warriors in your army composition if you are playing Erebor and just have an equal amount of these units. So that would be a possibility. What could also work is something like this, just have two units over here and you are good to go. You can also scale down your Ram Riders down and also increase the number of your Guardians over here. Or how about you replace your Guardians with Iron Warriors with the same logic, have a decent amount of Iron Warriors that are going to tank and you have Ram Riders basically here to increase the physical damage because of Trample. So, so this is the reason why you may want to have 
Ram Riders in your army. Now what you can also do is something like this. How about also including one Elven unit that has Evade, like get the cheapest one, Hunter. Have a minimum amount of command just to have a decoy in your army. So this too makes a lot of sense. But you can also have an equal amount of Ram Riders and one tanky unit in this composition. Make sure you always have one decoy in your army because this 100% of evading one attack is a good chance of evading one convener attack. Every damage that is misdirected from your main tank units is a win for you. Now let me show you also the troop composition for Thorin's troop boosting build. If you are going with that build, again you should have one tanky unit in your army, like a dwarven tanky unit that could be iron warriors or guardians. And then you want to also include some master throwers because inspiration, the skill inspiration works perfectly fine for this troop composition. Master throwers are going to deal lots of damage and you want to ensure you burst a lot in the first three rounds. And then when you equip the wizard's firework, you are further increasing the damage of this. And with the focus that wizard's firework has, you also increase the burst damage with inspiration. So, and while you are at it, how about including one elven unit again, just to have another decoy, so your main units, like your tank unit and your master throwers, have a chance of staying longer in the fight whenever damage is misdirected to your elven units. And there you go, this is how you can get started with your Thorin, be it in his respect 3 build with his damage dealing build or with his troop boosting build. Let's also follow up with some battle reports to share, in this case I am fighting a Khaldun, we are almost at the same level, it is an equal fight, let's have a look at my gear. The battle axe with play, just as I have demonstrated at the beginning. Hallback with fire protection. Cask of Submergile with determination. Piff lane with mend. I am running Thorin in his damage dealing build, as you see. And then, Khaldun has this gear. Gigantic hammer, break defenses. Scale mail, melee vigor. Bone mask with manipulate. Wizards fireworks with hunter's mark. So overall, a great Khaldun we have here. And then this is the outcome. We have done 182k damage versus 175k. And this is the detailed view. Thorin is pretty much carrying this fight with his damage. Here I am fighting against a Grima player. Let's check the gear again. Battle axe, nothing has changed. And the Grima player has this gear. Cutlass with smite. Scale may with melee vigor. Bone Mask with Manipulate, one out Smoking Pipe. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the new build of Grimar. Grimars have shifted from the Madness build into this overall damage boosting and survivability build. This is the new meta for him, and this is the outcome we have achieved. 184k damage versus 207. I have noticed with Thorin against Grimar, he is having a hard time. Thorin is dealing the damage by himself. And here I am fighting a very strong Gorbak player. I think we remember him from my last video. A very good Gorbak. This is my gear. Nothing has changed. In this case I have included uh, Elven units in my army comp. And yeah, this is the Gorbak player. Very outstanding gear. Mithril coat with barrier. I am speechless. Like outstanding, amazingly good gear. Penalty of Orphan Tactical Mark and he committed into his damage dealing build with Interrogator. If we had Thorin's Respect 10 item in this case, we could have turned the tides. So in cases like these, where you want to be a counter against Orcs, it would make sense to commit into Thorin's Respect 10 item. This is the snapshot page, 170k damage versus 320k -ish damage. And again, the detailed view, once again, Thorin has done the main job over here. His troops couldn't survive long enough against this Garbag player. Here is another case where Thorin struggles against Orc boosting commanders. It is a Gothmog. So let's have a look. My Thorin in this case has a Wizard's Firework of Hunter's Mark because I expected to face a Grimar. Unfortunately, in this case, this accessory isn't doing any good for me. And here I am fighting Gothmog. He is very strong. He has Cutlass with Flay. 
He has Goblin Armor with Orcs Vigor, Brutal Helmet and Melee Vigor, Realms of Moria with Haste of Soldiers. Alright, you might argue Cutlass with Melee might would have been better for him, but still, he has outstandingly good skills. Like, all of his skills make sense. And this is the outcome. We couldn't hold our ground. In this case, Thorin needed his respect 10 item. Against Orc boosting commanders, he is falling short. And here we have the snapshot page, 100k damage versus 200, almost 240k damage. And here we see, oh gosh, our damage is too low. Our troops didn't survive long enough for Thorin to deal more damage. Here I am fighting a Witch King, let's quickly jump to our gear. I see we have switched back to Hifflane and Mand. And then Witch King has this gear, Cutlass with Melee Might, Golden Skin and Dominance, Brutal Helm and Brat, Shield of the White Hand and Haste of Urukai. Meta build Witch King for sure. And this is the outcome. Like we could hold our ground just because of his Oaken Shield damage mitigation paired with superior Hauberk and fire protection. Like this is why I'm saying to you guys get yourself fire protection just to be safe because Witch Kings nowadays are lurking behind every tree. Here is a snapshot page 250k damage versus 207k. And Thorin has done almost 190k damage. And just for your curiosity, I have two builds in his troop boosting build. Now this is my Thorin. I have the Wizard's Fireworks with Hunter's Mark because this is going to boost the damage of my Master Throwers and my burst damage for my troops in general. You see, this is my build. And I am fighting this Khaldun. He has the Battle Axe to play. Scouts made with Shroud. Pull him with melee vigor, with its fireworks and hunter's mark. This is the outcome. We have done almost 150k damage versus 160k damage. You see there is a big shift in Thorin's damage right now. One more report and this time I'm fighting against Grimar. Thorin again has the wizard's firework and hunter's mark is working for us because we are fighting against Grimar. Grimar has prudence so we are directly countering prudence. The question is, is this enough to have a great report in our troop boosting build? Now Grima has this gear, Cutlass with Flay, Mithra Coat with Serenity, Brutal Helmet with Melee Wigger, and one on Smoking Pipe and Sustain of course. So was this enough? Unfortunately it doesn't look like it, right? So that lets me think maybe his damage dealing build is better for Thorin. Let's have a look. 112k damage versus 212k damage. I am not satisfied with this build and this report at all. So I will keep playing Thorin in his respect 3 build. Once I have unlocked his respect 5 build, I will shift a few things. Remember, if you are playing Thorin in his respect 3 build, do not put any remaining points into Revivalist because Revivalist is going to screw your Dwarven grid skill order. So that being said, invest everything what you have in regards to leftover points into his respect 5 title. And yeah, that's basically it. This is Soren. Now if you do need to look into more commander guides, I do have a full playlist with various commanders. Go take a look. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed this one, let me know by leaving a like and consider subscribing. I see you guys next time.